Ich and Lars Weiler will now present something about that. Please give them a warm welcome. Yeah, thank you and good afternoon. Um, we have made a little presentation um, on hacker spaces, that means physical spaces where hackers can gather. Yes, this is our outline, so we first want to start with uh, the introduction and uh, then the next big part will be the hacker space design pattern catalog we uh, prepared. And after that, a small conclusion, so I think we will take about an hour. Yeah, just one more thing in advance. Uh, we are sure that there will be many questions and many detailed questions as well. Um, we will get to that later. Yeah, uh, sure. We will have a chance to ask you questions. So, who we are? This is Jens. <laughs> Jens is the co-founder of the Cars Computer Club in Cologne uh, back 10 years. And uh, he's still active there, so he can tell a lot about uh, setting up a hacker space and uh, how it runs and how we can work in it. Um, he's also a CCC activist, so he started in the CCC more than 15 years ago. He was a spokesman for the CCC. He was also a board member of the CCC uh, EV. Yeah, so short yeah. introduction. You should know him. Th this is uh, Lars of Bilon. Um He went to, to found the Chaos Computer Club in Düsseldorf, Karlsdorf. He's now uh, been active in Cologne for several years now, um, more than eight years of CCC activism under the hood, so to say, and uh, also he has been a spokesperson for the CCC, meaning he spoke with the press uh, and tried to communicate the official, if there is such a thing, uh, viewpoint of the KS Computer Club to the press and other interested parties, uh, and he also was a member on the board of the CCC umbrella organization that we have. Um, there are only two names on this presentation, but um, again, I think I should stress this is really a group effort. We got inspiration from, from so many people. Uh, there is some points that were pointed out by Tim Pritlove of CCC Berlin. Some points were pointed out from our very good friends from the Mitte Lab in Vienna and also various members of the CCC in Cologne contributed many of the, of the points when we beta tested the design patterns against them. So the Chaos Computer Club in Cologne, uh, short presentation, so uh, has we founded, as I said, uh, 10 years back, so in 1997. Um, we are currently around 42 members, so well, probably a bit more, a bit less, so about 42 is a good number. Um, our club room, that's uh, version 3.5 because uh, yeah, we moved two times and we're in that club room which we have now for eight years um, with a small enlargement now with bigger rooms. Um, yeah, and the pictures you will see in this presentation, they are all taken in this club room um, so that you can have a small uh, image of our room. So, why is this catalog? Yeah, the backstory is that uh, in 2007 we received a call for action from the American Hacker Foundation, especially from Nick Farr and other people who organized a thing called Hackers on a Plane, where they took American hackers uh, from a large hacking event in Las Vegas, USA, to the Chaos Communication Camp in Finnefurt, near Berlin on a plane, imagine, and then uh, what happened afterwards was even more amazing. They uh, did a tour um, of hacker spaces, of uh, club rooms and other physical spaces where hackers gathered in um, Germany and Austria. And I think they got a lot of inspiration there. What we wanted to present to them um, was um, a recipe how hacker spaces work, because that was the number one question. How how can you sustain, how can the European scene sustain these hacker spaces um, while it doesn't seem to go so well in the US? Um, and we started and really wanted to have a manual where you have a step by step description of uh, how to build a hacker space. And then we found out, no, that's a totally wrong approach because 
every hackerspace is different and um, they all have their own beauty, they all have uh, their own unique solutions to problems and it's all good that way. So what we can present to you is design patterns, patterns that emerge from more than 10 years of running a hackerspace, things that worked out for us and um, things that may work for you or at least it's a good point of starting where you can steal ideas and build your own hackerspace, your own startup. Yeah, so what are design patterns? Uh, design patterns derive from, uh, yeah, from urban planning. So if you want to build up a city, you have some uh, special things you need in every city, like uh, the, the residential parts and the commercial part, industrial parts, and um, how can you connect them Furthermore, you need something for uh, your leisure time, like uh, sport places and so on. And some people created design patterns. So um, you have a problem and you want to implement it and they will give you uh, yeah, a short overview how you can do it. So this, this metaphor was taken to computer science where design patterns really mean in object-oriented software engineering, they mean you have a Lego box where you can pick bricks from and put them together. So the solution is not the finished product, but you just get the Lego box where you can pick the bricks from and then build your own. And uh, we thought that was a very good metaphor for what we wanted to communicate. So we stole the idea of design patterns and what we have here is now a design pattern catalogs for running hackerspace. Yeah. So what we want to tell you. So first, uh, yeah, like Dan said, we want to tell you how we built up our hackerspace, uh, which problems we had, and um, how we resolved these problems. Um, this won't be a detailed menu, so um, don't take it exactly one to one to your hackerspace. So you have to be uh, creative, and I think your problems will be a little bit different from our problems. Yeah, and being creative is the number one reason of starting a hackerspace in the first place anyway. So your mileage will, uh, may vary and um, without yeah. further ado, here's the design patterns catalog. So we uh, have some parts of this catalog. We uh, divided it into five different uh, groups. So first group is the sustainability patterns. Um, how you can start your hackerspace and how you can run it. Furthermore, um, the independence patterns, uh, very important pattern for us, and that's what something what we wanted to tell the uh, US American hackers as well. The regularity patterns, that means uh, how you can run it regularly with meetings and so on. Uh, furthermore, conflict resolution patterns, I think that's the biggest part. <laughs> if you have conflicts, how you can resolve it. And furthermore, some creative chaos patterns, uh, which won't fit in any group. Uh, Just a mixed bag. <laughs> the categories are, of course, debatable, but uh, these are the ones that we came up with. This is a constant work of progress. We, um, we have given this presentation a few times before. Now it's here at the Case Communication Congress. We have added some things. We cl clarified some bits, but um, I think this will... Um, this will stay work in progress for, for some time now. Um, we have some ideas on how to expand that in an organized way as well. That's a task for later. So, first pattern. The infrastructure pattern. The problem. You have a chicken and egg problem. What should come first? Infrastructure or projects? So, uh, you have the idea, you want to start. What's the first thing you should do? Oh, that's an apple starting. <clears throat> We think, or what we want to tell you is, start with the infrastructure first. So find rooms, build up your network, um, set up your servers, and so on and so on, so that everything will evolve later. Everything will come from its own. So if you have the room, you can meet, and you can share your ideas, you can enlarge your projects, and so on. It's the most important, important part. So start with the infrastructure. You will also have a concept when starting your hackerspace and uh, it may be very elaborate, like we want to have a hackerspace where everyone is into electronic tinkering. 
and then someone, some someday someone knocks on your door who is uh, maybe a software guy or uh, does some amazing um, art projects, and then it will all fit in. But you haven't had, you, you didn't have that in your concept. So um, be prepared to be surprised what your hackerspace will turn out to be. But uh, provide a good infrastructure. Don't think that you can can provide a common theme to it. People will find a common theme, but provide the infrastructure, make everything infrastructure driven. Once there is infrastructure, people will do the most amazing project with it that you haven't dreamt of before. Yeah. So uh, this is a, a picture from our server room, <laughs> our network operation center. Um, yes, it's a small room with some storage in, and you see the network cables over there, and yeah, so that's our infrastructure that drives the whole cloud room, I would say. Uh, well, not exactly, but uh, there's the network <laughs> and the phone. Yes, yeah, the grace hopper pattern. So, is it really the time to start your hackerspace? This is, uh, I think, the most important question uh, some people will ask. Um, and should we wait a little bit more when more people will come and um, will join us and will help out? Um, and do we really have thought about all the problems? Yeah, people will will tell you about. And finally, a real-time communication platform. Java. And you will need all three. Implement it the way that you feel it's okay, but you will need all three things for running your group. That should be easy. Should be easier. <laughs> so, critical mass pattern. Um, you want to start the hacker space, but alone, I don't think that you can start it. So, what's the number you need for starting hacker space uh, in the city where you live? We think it's two plus two. Because you need two people who have the idea. The, yeah, so the image what should be done in a couple of years or so. The initial vision. The vision, right. And you need two people uh, with a helping hand, at least. So um, four people for starting a hackerspace. And you should recruit more people soon so that you can have 10 people within a couple of months. And we, we really found out that uh, the number of 10 people is seems to be the, the the magic number when a hackerspace turns from operational to sustain sustainable. It's also uh, interesting to, to see when your hackerspace enlarges, so like with our 42 members, we, have, we still have groups of about 10 people within a project. So we don't work all in one project, but we have a couple of projects and uh, about 10 people in every project. So it's really a good number. Okay, next pattern. Strong, Strong personality. personality patterns. Yeah, you know the problem, nothing gets done. You all want the hacker space, but it's so hard to get off your asses. And nobody really wants to take the initiative. Um, there is really no way around it, but um, this implementation. Um, you really need strong personalities as a member of your original group. And uh, these should be people who have experience with building structures. Uh, and one thing that we really want to stress is this is not about uh, playing a game of ranks and powers and stuff. Uh, you should look for people who have authority, natural authority, because they are cool people, because they're wizards, and thus get respect. And you shouldn't get you shouldn't have any people who use authority and get laughed at, especially with an anti-authoritarian group like hackers. Um, but still, um, driving forces behind the projects are important. If you're just um, slackers, nothing will get done. So it's uh, also interesting to hear from the MetaLab in Vienna. Uh, they said they had two persons from uh, other hacker spaces, uh, one from uh, the Netzladen in Bonn and another one from Berlin or more hacker spaces. And um, those two people helped a lot in uh, setting up this infrastructure because uh, they had a little bit experience with it. Mm. Um, so 
yeah, I won't say these are strong personalities, but the person with experience. Yeah. And you really need them. And eventually hackerspaces will spawn more hackerspaces. People will move to other cities and then they wonder um, why isn't there something like in my hometown in this city? And then easy solution would be to set, up, set it up because you already have experience. Yeah, that's the way the hackerspace in Cologne has been founded. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay, next group, independence patterns. So why independence? Or yeah, so what about the landlord and the neighbor would? Well, you have found the perfect hacker space. You have found a room where you can meet. Um, but the landlord, so the owner, seems to be a little bit weird. So uh, there are some nerds and they do bad things and they are hackers and they steal my money from the bank account and so on. Um, and also neighbors see people with pizza boxes uh, going in and out uh, by day and night. So they're a little bit picky. <clears throat> so what do you can tell you is uh, you really should make, uh, you really should become known to your neighborhood. If you have found this hacker space, go around, have a talk with the persons and don't take the room instantly. So take your time and think about it. Yeah, and a benevolent but uninterested landlord and cool neighbors can be the decisive reason why the hacker spaces take off or not. Um, yeah, not so cool neighbors may call the cops at uh, 2 a.m. Um, this this really may be a problem. Let let me tell you something about the neighbors we have at the hackerspace in Cologne, C4. <laughs> 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 um, we have very nice, very well-mannered neighbors that run a dominatrix studio. Um, <laughs> they're cool. They, they like to dress funny. We do. Um, they they have a feeling for privacy uh, when <laughs> so do we um, we get along great um, and this seems to be like a minor sub pattern as well because um, what what was it in in Karlsruhe they I think they share <coughs> the What's... rooms with some gay activist group. Yeah. Um, and um, in Dortmund, they also have a gay uh, cafe beside their doors. So um, quite interesting. So yeah. usually they don't, they don't share members. Probably so we what, don't know. <laughs> what we think is, as hackers, you don't live in the majority lifestyle. And if you have neighbors who are also weird and outside the majority lifestyle, that seems to go well together. And like I read in one article like a combination of chocolate and peanut butter. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, next pattern. The roommate anti-pattern. So you have your lab and um, yeah, you can't collect all the funds for it, so you can't collect the rent. And then there's one hacker and says, well, uh, I can live in it, I can take care for the room and I can also spend a couple of money for uh, this hacker space every month. What we say is, don't do it. Don't do it. Yes. So guests are fine, but uh, don't have anybody living in this in your hacker space. So think about the person who lives inside. Um, this person also needs privacy. Um, you want to work at your projects during night, and uh, here's his girlfriend with him. Well, not so good. Um, it will just end up everyone feeling very awkward and. Uh, it's just not a place where people live. It should be like the perfect living room without people living there. <laughs> okay, kick them out. Yeah, separate pattern. So, uh, we didn't find a good English word for separate, so we took a French word. Um, yeah. You sometimes want to chill or discuss or work in small groups but um, you have a main room which is occupied and there's simply too many people at your space. Or something that turns up at every European hacker space I've been to is uh, uh, interesting discussions between smokers and non-smokers um, that you can only put an end to by separating the two groups. 
So what we did is uh, we found a hackerspace with a couple of rooms. So we have one big main room, you can see it here at the bottom. And there are a lot of smaller rooms, um, separate rooms, you can... Uh, the separates here. Yeah, the separates. So we have doors, we have curtains. We can distinguish between the smokers and non-smokers. Um, so it's a perfect thing because you can have five discussions at the same time and nobody is uh, disturbing the other discussion around. So you really need more than one room. Next one, kitchen pattern. Yeah, this is one of our good rooms where we have a lot of discussions. <laughs> so you need food as a human being. I don't think you have robots. Any ob robot in here? No? Oh, bad. Uh, so, you also need caffeine and other drinks, beverages and so on. And you need food at odd times. So what we did, or what we have, is a kitchen. Um, we also cook together sometimes, um, or we prepare good food. <laughs> uh, we also have a fridge, or two fridges exactly, for a club mate, of course, and other drinks. Um, uh, co cooking together is another micro pattern, I'd say. Um, in Cologne, we do it on an ad hoc basis, like uh, Lars says, I want to make vegetarian pasta, who wants to join me? Um, and uh, at the Meter Lab in Vienna, they have, uh, have it regularly scheduled every Sunday is cooking and eating together. It really brings people together. Yeah, and the single most important piece of hardware we bought after the first one broke is a, dis is a dishwasher. You really want it. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's really more important than buying that hard disk upgrade. Really, really invest in a dishwasher. Really. It will, <laughs> it will end so many unpleasant discussions. <laughs> yeah, we still have discussions about uh, who wants to uh, unload it. Well, the clean dishes, sometimes they will stay in for a couple of days, but... <clears throat> It's even better have clean dishes than have uh, dirty dishes. Selling soft drinks is one of the major income of your hackerspace. All of the hackerspaces I have been into make up to 50% of their income from selling soft drinks. Well, that's another pattern later. <laughs> and it's always good to show nerds how to cook real food. Yeah, it's, it's really funny. So if you cook with nerds, uh, how can I slice this tomato? <laughs> it's a very important question. They never, never did it before. And there's no main page on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and cooking is like coding. So you have to compile your food. You have to eat it. <laughs> and afterwards, you have to do a make clean. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go on. <laughs> Let's go. So. Uh, now, there's a picture from our kitchen. Yeah, we have a bed. Go back. So, <laughs> I must have pressed on. There's it. So, um, so, our kitchen was a table in it and some chairs. Um, yeah, you need this oven, you need these two fridges, the dishwasher, have microwave a oven. Have a stock of uh, ramen noodles, uh, cereals, whatever. Yeah. And yeah, that's it. That's it. So, coziness. Coziness, very important. All work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. And there must be something else than only workstations and electronics. What we have is we have a lot of couches, sofas, comfortable chairs, not only these in the kitchen, tables, tables ashtrays, ambient light, stereo equipment. Projector, video games, uh, video game console. So you all need it, you all want it, really. Just yeah. make it a perfect living room without anyone living there. And one thing, bringing in plants didn't work for us. And here's the photograph. Yeah, proof. first, first, uh, this is our North Center. This is the room where we have our sofas, we have a television in it, we have some sound uh, system in it. It's a room where I can also smoke because it has a window. Uh, we have some uh, pillows. Oh, thanks for the pillows, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, and we have our plant named Igor. This is a picture from September. <laughs> 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 so I found a picture from September 2006, and uh, now it looks, um, yeah, there's no leaves on it uh, still. 
poor Igor. Doesn't seem to be a good combination, but uh, maybe you can do better. But I would be surprised. <laughs> okay. It's, it's the third plant, I think. Uh. <laughs> Shower. Yeah, long hacking sessions. Uh, you know it after a couple of time, or you know it from the Congress here, so you have been here for a couple of days, and then you will smell funny. I would say funny. <clears throat> Um, another interesting thing is you have guests and uh, yeah, you also need something for your hygiene. What we have, or what the discriminate hackerspace has, is a bathroom with a shower. So this is really rare. Only a few hackerspaces seem to have a bathroom with a shower, but we, we think this is the gold standard for hackerspaces, having a bathroom and a shower. <laughs> the discriminate hackerspaces really seems to, really needs to have that. And if you want to go the extra mile, like we did, you could buy a washing machine to get rid of the smelly towels. <laughs> a couple of years back, we had a map uh, with all hacker spaces in uh, Germany. Well, we didn't have any hacker spaces in Austria or uh, Switzerland. So we had a map with all hacker spaces in Germany, and uh, there was also a symbol on it. So this hacker space has a shower. <laughs> so this is, we call them au pair hackers, people who in the summertime go around uh, in Germany, hitchhiking maybe, from hackerspace to hackerspace, finding inspiration, working on projects, and they need a couch to crash on. And of course they need to shower, because there's nothing like a mobile shower invented yet. The eye shower or something like that. <laughs> um, so it needs to be a hardware installation in the hackerspace. We have one, and it's, uh, yeah, it's usable. It's yeah, and we found this funny little tux uh, on the bottom in the uh, do-it-yourself shop. I never thought they would sell Tux with a bath cap on it, so... <laughs> yeah, so, next one. Membership fee patterns. It's still an independence pattern. So, uh, you need to pay your rent, as we said before, um, and you also need some money for utilities, like a projector or a new server, hard drive, and so on. Uh, and sometimes you have larger projects, um, like building a steam power telegraphy engine. For example. <laughs> so you need to refund it. What we do is we collect fees regularly once a month. Uh, we have a fee of uh, about 10, uh, 23 euros a month. Or for, the, for those who can't afford it, uh, only 70 euros. And um, it's better to make, to make uh, appropriate amounts and then make no exceptions than, you know, demand something that is way too high and then people will say oh uh, I cannot pay this month can I pay next month and then of course you forget about it and then you feel bad about reminding them just make no exceptions but set an appropriate amount that's it and have them uh, have discounts for for students especially for high school students there's a there's a, a long culture in the CCC of giving discount to high school students because we really think they are the future at the Congress, yeah, we, we really should, um, you know, give discounts to them because eventually they should take over everything. <laughs> um, they should be motivated. Um, and have at least three months of rent on your account all the time, no exceptions. This is what we do in Cologne. Always three months worth of rent on our account so we will, won't run into unexpected problems. And of course, elect a totalitarian Stalinist Fascist treasurer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the guy who can kick asses, yeah. <clears throat> so, the sponsoring anti pattern. Um, some people might think so it might be good to have your hackerspace at a company because they. Uh, will give you a room or at the university. Um, this might be a problem. The problem is that probably, yeah, so companies want something back from donations. Or university is a problem uh, for people who don't like universities. They won't never appear in your hackerspace. So sometimes there's a situation where people want to set up a, a hackerspace and they know each other from class, from university, or uh, from 
working at a certain company, which is cool, and then they say, let's meet at that place, because we all are there anyway. And by that, you will exclude anyone who is not part of that culture. You will exclude people who are not part of the university culture by meeting at a, at a college or a university, and you will just stay a college group. And you will have no interesting high school kids or people who didn't care for college education coming into your hackerspace. It should be culturally neutral. Same goes for a company. I know a lot of cool companies and I'm glad to receive donations from them, but never ever depend your space on external sponsors. Never ever do that. Because the system is just that and you, you, cannot, you cannot discuss it. No one gives away presents forever without asking for favors in return. It might be, may be subtle, but it will happen. Another problem is if you meet at a university, uh, you have to yeah, leave your room early, like at 10 in the evening, when the housekeeper goes around and supposed to you're out. And furthermore, you have to clean it up. So in your own hackerspace, you can just leave your stuff there and come back the next day and work on it furthermore. Just look for an independent room, that's it. Yeah. So, next group, regularity patterns. Are we in time still? Um, okay, so. we should go a little bit faster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, clean on pattern. Yeah, you have internal conflicts, you uh, will also, or you have discussions, you need discussions, you have to, yeah, you have to plan Furthermore, what you will do in your hackerspace or which pro projects you want to start. Um, what you can do is have a plenum, a regular meeting. Well, it's supposed to be all problems. members. It's also important. And you should set up an agenda. So just in front of the plenum, it's, uh, it's okay. So write Use the down. mailing list or the wiki that you installed earlier. Yeah. <laughs> set goals. So what you want to, yeah, what, what you want to implement also. Um, first of all, write down the minutes of this uh, plenum or this uh, meeting so that those people who don't attend it can read it later on. Or that you have uh, uh, something like history um, that you can look it up later. So we discussed it, we decided it. It's written down in the wiki or somewhere else. And for choosing a date, go for the only date that works, once a week. It never works like first full moon after the third Friday. <laughs> and every other week doesn't work as well because people will always forget, is this the right week or the wrong week? The only way that you can get all the people together is meeting every week. There is just one exception to that and it would be meeting every day but this is impractical. So make everyone know that we will meet every week, no exception, except when attending the Congress. Right. So that's the next question. So when should we meet? So and we every have a pattern sucks. for that, the Tuesday pattern. Every weekday sucks. So there will be one day in every week uh, where nobody can attend or where or this one person who says, oh, no, I can't, there's my sports or something else. Well, there's one small solution. Pick the Tuesday. Meet on Tuesday. All these are equally <laughs> bad. Just pick Tuesday. End of discussion. <laughs> there's no. something that has been implemented in the CCC 20 years ago, and it's more than 20 years ago. More than 20 years ago, yes. And a lot of hackerspaces or a lot of CCC groups still meet on Tuesday. And it's good because you can always call at the hackerspace in Hamburg or Berlin on a Tuesday and you know they will be there. They will be ha holding their meetings there because it's Tuesday. No? <laughs> it's, not, it's not totally true. You could also, in theory, meet on Thursdays. No, no, we, no, no, Tuesday. But we didn't want to complicate <laughs> matters. Just meet on Tuesdays. Yeah, end of discussion. So, <laughs> the open chaos pattern. Uh, your hackerspace is running and you want to bring in new people. So, what can you do? 
we want to provide an interface to the outside, well, outside world. Um, so an, a platform where you can show yourself like we do with the Congress. And in Cologne, we implemented the so-called Open Chaos. That's a monthly public open lecture, talk, workshop, or something else. We announced it a week before, so uh, we also <laughs> use our local time. Uh, I think it's important for those uh, in the United States who so don't use uh, any other time. Use your local time where your hacker place, uh, hacker space is located. Um, also, invite interesting people. So people um, who can give a talk or go to the Congress and ask the people if they want to come to your open chaos so that they can also give the presentations there. Okay. What we have in Cologne is we have a regular meeting for the members on a secret day of the week, which I will not tell you, although you may, may be able to guess. Um, <laughs> and we have this open chaos thing. And uh, we used to um, have all kinds of weird people who had this glimpse in their eyes saying, me together with the CCC, we can free the world from the Illuminati. Uh, you have to join the, uh, the fight, and we were not really interested in that. Um, so we said, okay, there's one, one def uh, defined interface for the public, which is our Open Chaos Lecture, and you can go there. And if we don't like, like you, just leave after the lecture. If you are interesting, then we will invite you to that uh, members meeting on that super secret day of the week. I just thought we need some more steam in this lecture. We have 15 minutes left. <laughs> okay. Well, the U23 pattern. Uh, you need fresh young blood. Uh, well, because a couple of you, yeah, graduate from college, move, get married, or something like that. So some stupid things. What we did is uh, we set up a special course for this uh, young folks, where we tell them. Yeah, in a challenge, what, uh, yeah, or we set up a set challenge so that we can work on it in groups. Um, for a couple of weeks, we had six or eight weeks, usually. Um, they get a problem and they should solve it. And afterwards, they should uh, do a presentation about it. So we announced it a little bit larger in Germany on the high ticker. <clears throat> we had around 40 people. And every year we have, yeah, so three to five people who will still hang around at uh, our hackerspace, who uh, helps us in our new projects and so on. So that's a real cool thing. You can and eventually the young ones have taken over the hackerspace, and we are grateful to them that, we, that they still let us do presentations like that, but in day-to-day -day operation, you know, it's the young people who run it, and not us. We okay. can also select the best from the best. <laughs> okay, next. Next one. The sine curve pattern. Yeah, you did everything right. You had big events and a nice time in your shiny hacker space. But after some time, the enthusiasm goes away, and your projects are stagnating. And this is a pattern that uh, we found out, that everything in a hacker space seems to have the form of a sine wave. Mm -hmm. Um, peak enthusiasm at a hackerspace has the form of the sine curve with a cycle duration of four years. It's really so, like that. Um, every four years you will do amazing things and enthusiasm will be at a peak and then it goes down and down and you will experience times when nothing is happening. And the only thing that is happening at a hackerspace is that the fridge is refilled. But you should keep your hackerspace running even if the feel-good factor is temporarily on holidays, and uh, chances are your uh, space will be awesome again in two years. Don't give up. Maybe an exciting new member with a new project will knock on your door tomorrow. Oh, we had that in Cologne. We had that in Cologne. And we experienced the same thing in, in Bonn at the moment. But I think we can leave the sine curve uh, soon. Yeah, next one. So, uh, Next group, conflict resolution patterns. Uh, the most important ones, I think, when your hackerspace is running. So, the consensus pattern. Yeah, uh, you need a group decision, and you don't want to leave somebody behind. What you will do is, yeah, use your weekly plenum as a special day. Don't take votes, just discuss, 
as long as everybody, uh, uh, until everybody will agree. And uh, we think for some problems, this pattern is the best. For some problems. For yeah. some problems. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Democracy, second best. Um, you need to make a group decision, discuss. Discussion does not seem to lead you anywhere. Typical example would be smoker's room. Should it be a non-smoker or smoker? Uh, friendly hackerspace, there is really no way of achieving uh, a consensus about that because people are, feel really strong about this thing and the only thing that you can deal with that problem is old-fashioned democracy, use the weekly plenum for discussion, but do take votes, the strongest minority wins over the weaker minorities, so um, not so good as consensus, but for some problems this pattern is the best. The command pattern, yeah. Uh, nobody does the dishes. Okay, well, you have the, the dish, dishwasher, but uh, nobody unloads it. Yeah, and your hackerspace looks crappy. Uh, there's a lot of <coughs> dirty and dust uh, lying around. So no one seems to care about it. Yeah, what we think is, yeah, order the people to do the dishes. Uh, take out the trash, keep the infrastructure up and running. Yell if necessary. But always participate. That's because important. It, because you won't be, I mean, <laughs> that would be ridiculous if you were trying to, to order people something to do something against their own will and not participate. Yeah, and for some problems, this pattern is the best. <laughs> yes, yeah, so the leadership pattern is uh, similar. Um, oh, we stole that. We stole that from, uh, uh, from a mailing list of a hackerspace that is just about to uh, establish itself in San Francisco. And it's just such a beautiful, such a beautiful wording that we absolutely had to steal that. Pseudo leadership, it's, I mean, as a Unix geek, you instantly understand what it means. <laughs> you started as a community of like-minded people, but suddenly you find yourself in a dictatorship run by a single hacker, a king of the, uh, of the hacker space, suddenly you have ranks and stuff like that and uh, all kinds of power games. Um, so what we think would be a solution, don't have ranks. Maybe for a project you need leadership, like someone saying, okay, we're going to do that and that and that, but only temporary. So pseudo leadership, don't have a single route. Yeah, it's a responsibility pattern. So um, it's every time the same, there's a person who says, yeah, we'll run the mail server and so on. Um, and someday it doesn't work anymore because we don't have time anymore, uh, just want to flag. Um, so we want to tell you, take pride in your volunteer work. So you're the one who runs the mail server and everybody is loving you because you're running the mail server and you should do it good. And if you don't do that volunteer work, you will not hurt some faceless customers of some company that you don't like in the first place, you will hurt your friends. And the people who re you really like who come to your hackerspace. Um, just because it's volunteer work and doesn't get paid doesn't mean it's less important. It will make you grow stronger as a person and it's satisfying. And when you realize that you really cannot do the job anymore, your last task is to hand it over. Yeah, that should be done. And the debate culture pattern. <laughs> You're still nerds. Um, yeah, and sometimes during the, the weekly plenum, everybody's yelling, so it's a problem. Quite every hackerspace will uh, have once a year or even after, often. Um, and nothing gets to be done, so this is like this discussion will about who will take out the trashes and so on. I, w I attended a very violent discussion at the hackers page, which I will not name, where people were literally throwing objects at each other because yelling was not <laughs> was not enough to make their points. Um, of course, this is not the way to go. And many geeks have very poor debate skills. This is the result of years of flame wars on the net. <laughs> make people with actual social skills lead the discussion, structure this question, not actually lead it, but structure it. Um, those with a background in real life political works, in our example from student council, were best for our groups because they went through all that shit before. Um, and you can learn from them. And 
a skill that you can also learn is learn not to interrupt others. It's uh, connected to this um, strong personalities pattern. Yeah. Back, uh, if if, like. if you, basically, if you see someone has a skill, encourage them to use that skill for the good of the group, right? So, the bike shed anti pattern, yeah, is a new pattern. Yeah. Um, FreeBSD developers will know what this is about. You suggest creating something new for your hackerspace, like a bike, bike shed. But now everyone discusses about the color. Um, no bike shed will be built because people will say, no, it has to be a red bike shed, not a green bike shed. That's it's, a no problem. <laughs> if you suggest something, what everyone else in your hackerspace can build, they will take part in the discussion. This is especially true for administrating servers, stuff like that. And if it's only the color of the bike shed, the design of the t-shirts, the Linux distribution on the server, etc., Nerds tend to discuss trivial pro problems in epic detail, <laughs> while more complex tasks will be ignored. And you should identify pointless discussions like these and just end them. Yeah, that's the essence of it. And uh, this... <laughs> this bike shed problem comes uh, from a book in the 1960s called Parkinson's Law from C. North called Parkinson um, on management. And in the specific example involving the bike shed, the other vital component is an atomic power plant. I guess that illustrates the age of the book. Parkinson shows how you can go into a board of directors and get approval for building a multi-million or even billion dollar atomic power plant, but, it, but if you want to build a bike shed, you will be tangled up in endless discussions. Because a power plant is such a complicated thing, people will just say, oh, I don't know anything about it. They must have sorted out all the details before. I better not uh, take part in the discussion. But if it's really trivial and they can contribute it to it like I want to have it in green color instead of red color they will contribute to the bitter end so just propose complex uh, <laughs> projects and no. you will be alone <laughs> so private talk pattern yeah finally so the last uh, about the um, about the, the, the yeah con um, um, conflict resolution pattern so there's a problem, or someone has a problem that cannot be resolved in the group, um, uh, probably because you don't want to um, hurt the person in the group or in front of the group. So um, let some experienced members of your group have a private talk with this person. And this person or this experienced member should listen to the person. So even if this person yells, should listen to it and find a resolution to the problem. Yeah, and still let them know how the, the group feels about the problem without exposing them. Like, this is our enemy, or uh, mobbing and stuff like that. Uh, just tell them in private. It works. Yeah. Therefore, you need separate rooms. <laughs> <laughs> so, last one, creative chaos patterns. The old hardware pattern, yeah. Uh, after the first few times we uh, host this presentation, uh, a couple of people ask, so what are you doing with your old hardware and your hackerspace? So, um, because you can't bring in new shiny uh, hardware and there's no space left. Uh, and your hackerspace yeah, evolves to a museum of uh, fill, uh, yeah, hardware museum filled with junk. What we do is uh, we have a pile or stack nowadays where we put that old hardware on. Um, unused hardware that yeah, can be taken by everyone. So everyone who needs old hardware can take it out, take it at home, and so on. Uh, but unused hardware is any hardware that is not labeled with a name on it, uh, where the owner cannot explain the purpose of the hardware in two sentences. Um, <laughs> which doesn't boot, where the root password is unknown to any member of the group. <laughs> and which generally looks dubious. And then it will be put on this pile or the stack and can be taken away from by anyone, but we will announce that regularly and it's, uh, we have an escalation system for that. So you need after, an escalation system. So after three announces, your hardware will be free for everyone to take because 
obviously you have failed in using it in a meaningful way for the hackerspace. And we still have people say half a year after we throw it uh, away. Oh they no, say, how could you throw away all that micro <laughs> <laughs> So we announced this three times, five times. Doesn't work, so this is a huge problem. You can't resolve it. <laughs> okay. So that's an extract, sorry, in German only, extract from our um, Gesetz zur Bereitstellung von Hardware im Chaos Labor. So we Germans, we like, we like to have rules. Um, so <laughs> this is um, just a short translation. The Chaos Lab is a room of exceptional order and uh, cleanliness. <laughs> where the Case Computer Club Cologne does their club work. Um, we have cleaning personals, and these are understood as persons who care about the state of the club room. Cleaning personnel always has hero status and immunity against um, flames from owners of not functional hardware, etc., etc. It goes on like that for a few pages. But anyway, this is how we regulate <laughs> the hardware museum the junk pile problem at our space. Yeah. So this is a picture from our uh, stake nowadays. So we had a pile before, and now the stake was, you can see it on the right side. Uh, everyone who enters our club room, that's the door behind. So that's the room who, for entering the club room will uh, fall over this hardware. Uh, yeah. That's just a small image. Yeah, the key pattern. Um, you want to assess your hackerspace at every time. Um, and you don't want to call somebody who has a key during night when you leave and so on. What you should do is hand out keys. So uh, Craig, who owns a key, um, especially if you have insurance for it, for your hackerspace, um, you should also have a good lock so that nobody can uh, um, go in without a key, so, um, and you should collect a deposit for it, so that uh, you have to pay 20 euro or so uh, to get a key, because then uh, the person takes care for it. Furthermore, you can also build a nice electronic locking system, if it works, is another question, and it's another. Das Labor in Bochum, an excellent hackerspace in the west of Germany, they uh, will be having a, dem uh, a presentation on their system called Anon Access, which is a, a, an anonymous but secure access electronic system buzzword thing um, for hackerspaces. And I think it's extremely interesting and worth stealing if you set up a new hackerspace. So if you want to um, find inspiration at that Congress, definitely see that presentation. But you could also go old school, like like us and hand out physical keys. Yeah. So, oh, the last pattern, the Club Mate pattern, yeah. You need to raise funds. You want to stay up longer during night. And you want to receive really good impressions without drugs. <laughs> <laughs> Buy at least one pallet of Club Mate, it's cheaper, and set it in your hackerspace. And you will see all the rela results very soon. And this is... <coughs> It this, is, this is really a pattern. I mean, I have not seen a functional operational hackerspace without excess amount of Club Marte. <laughs> yeah, this, are, this is part of our storage room for Club Marte. Yeah. It's a smaller part, I think. Yeah, it's a there's smaller a, part. There's a bigger storage as well. Yeah. So, conclusion. This is not a cookbook. Uh, there are no golden ways, as you said uh, in the introduction. There's no golden way to build up a hackerspace. These are our only some guidelines or so. Um, you really need experience, and you can also ask people with experience. Just be creative. Try it on your own way. And for questions and answers, we have, uh, yeah, this uh, today we have at 1715. Um, Registered workshop. A workshop room. And we will answer all your questions and we will discuss every little detail until we get thrown out of that workshop room. Thank you very much for listening. So, right. Thank you, thank you. Perfect.
just find your hackerspace or set up your own. <laughs>